All right, Ray, you got the red cup, huh? Well, solo cup, it's water. When I had a cup on my desk for the Rips podcast, he said, is that grain alcohol? <laughs> The first thing you'll notice is that the lobby is pretty basic. The reason why that's relevant is we did that intentionally. What happens when you go into most gyms? Well, you're greeted by a salesperson. And is there anyone more annoying in the world than a salesperson at a gym? We conduct all of our business online, um, and the, the gym is just to train. So the question is, how do you make this place as efficient as possible for the purpose of training? You just need the bare bones for starting strength. You need level platforms, you need multi-purpose power racks, you need high quality bars, you need high quality plates, you need some of the accessories like the belts. So we have our records board, and this is across all the gyms. We've got 16 open at the moment for each of the lifts. And these are cool because we can see how much stronger we make people over time based on age, based on sex, and then being on the leaderboard is really motivating for our members. The other screen is a custom app that we built as well, and this plugs into our membership management software, and this indicates who's in the next session and what their workout will be based on what's in their logbook. And since we're retail, this cost per square foot's high. So the name of this business, the name of the game in this business is revenue per square foot, right? So we have to maximize the space as much as possible. We want this gym as narrow as possible. This walkway is basically just wide enough for ADA compliance. We want as little space between racks as possible while still allowing for space for people to sit down and to not feel like they're, they're cramped. And then every gym, of course, has an Olympic weightlifting platform with a removable squat stand so you can do the Olympic lifts here. Everybody should be power cleaning if you can. So for our masochistic trainees, we have the, the rogue assault bike. Whenever trainees say like, oh, I think I should start doing some conditioning, we just give them a couple rounds on this thing and remind them that that's a bad idea. Hello, Jen and Nick here. Hey. We're gonna take you through some of the details of the gym. Let's start in the lobby. We have laminate floor we put in the lobby. Most lobbies are anywhere from six to seven and a half feet deep. White oak benches, that matches the white oak cubbies, that matches the white oak framing around the platform. So there's kind of a, an oak theme, and then the uh, flat benches are red oak, and laminate is somewhere in between. So trying to keep a, a wood theme. Even though it is simple, this stuff is all custom designed and custom built. I get very stressed out by floor transitions because most of the time people mess it up. This is a perfect example of a, a, a very clean job. So if you focus on the floor transitions, there is a metal transition strip that separates each flooring type. And it's a nice clean black strip and it should last the life of the gym. And that's the goal of, of all the materials we select is it lasts the life of the gym, if not longer. Even though, even though your average person walking in the door might not notice that trim is a little bit on level or there's a gap, but all those little things add up. Uh, equipment, so we've got uh, bars from Texas Power Bars, so uh, Buddy Caps in North Texas and Grand Prairie makes the bars, and then the, uh, the, the bar holders are made by Texas Strength Systems in uh, San Antonio. So the equipment is all custom made as well, so the racks are from Texas Strength Systems, all to RIPS design and specification. When you tell somebody we're building platforms, it's like, okay, well you're just stacking three pieces of plywood and gluing rubber to the top, but it turns out there's quite a bit more to it if you want it to look nice and you want it to last. So, so the platforms, is, they look simple, but there's a lot of work that goes into making them look so simple and clean. So three layers of MDF with a custom cut rubber mat on top, laser cut, so it's perfect width and, and length that we need, and there's no seam, so looks nice and clean. No, and then, if, you go to, if you go to Tractor Supply and buy a horse stall mat, it's gonna be four by six, right? right. So uh, most gyms you go into, there's gonna be a split right in the middle of this thing, or they'll have wood and then, and then rubber on the outsides. Yep. So we had to find somebody who would laser cut for us. Um, and then the other type of platform we have, as Ray pointed out, is this Olympic platform. Same idea, just some more MDF, and instead of all rubber on the top, as you can see, there's a piece of white oak that goes down the middle. Yeah, and white oak border instead of a, instead of a two by four, which is what you'll what you'll typically see. Mm -hmm. People know about the benches already, but the starting strength bench uh, was designed again for the gym specifically. But it's a it's a wooden bench with no padding and no fabric. Some people hate it. A lot of people love it. The one thing that 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 I found as a coach um, is that if the lifter feels immediately if they're not set up properly on the bench. If they're not set, if their back's not set tight, uh, that not having the cushion lets you know that if you're paying attention to it. Every uh, rack has a rack panel next to it. 
Um, if you've got a gym that's kind of a weird shape, they'll be freestanding, but usually they're hanging on the wall. I'm proud to say that this was my idea to have <laughs> stainless steel uh, whiteboards. It keeps with the, uh, with the general theme and aesthetic. And uh, these rack panels sit in here. You can write on them. You put your phone and your water bottle. Uh, keys and stuff on, on these. The plates come from the Strength Co. in uh, Southern California. Our friend Grant makes these. These are the nicest plates in existence. Um, so that's why we have them here. Uh, again, one of Rip's designs. So Rip designed the plate uh, and Grant made them to his specification and uh, they're made in the USA. And uh, the plate trees are another Texas Strength Systems um, production based on Rip's design. Uh, we keep at least one set of, of microplates, probably some, some gyms have two or three. These are from micro gains, and they go from one and a quarter pound all the way down to a quarter pound. So uh, allows us to load pretty precisely on the barbells. Another uh, one of Texas Strength Systems uh, made things designed by Rip, and this is a, the deadlift jack. So most of the time you don't need something like this, but when all of a sudden you have uh, plates that have a really tight tolerance, they don't just slide off the bar anymore, and now it's a lot easier to uh, put this under, raise the plates up, and then uh, and then slide the plates off. It also helps loosen the bolts on the rack. Oh yeah, it doubles stuck. as a, <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I don't, yeah, you go like this, right? Yep. So when they get stuck, yep. you, do this. you don't have to have Chase Lindley in there beating it <laughs> with a 10 pound plate to get the things off. Here's our uh, official starting strength chalk bowl, metal bowl welded onto a pipe and a plate, so uh, a real simple design, simple, hard, and effective, right? Training plates, so these are uh, Alico bumpers, and we have these in all the gyms for the Olympic lifts, and we also have uh, training plates for lighter deadlifts or for lighter Olympic lifts. The Wes at Texas Strength Systems made these uh, squat racks for us so that we can use the Olympic lifting platform as another station if we need it. So if you've got a smaller gym, um, you can have an Olympic platform with a station to squat, press, bench. So the starting strength belt is in every gym. We order uh, a set of these for every single gym so that people who don't have their own belt can just borrow one until they get their own. But this is Rip's design again, the three inch belt. But uh, This is made by Dominion Strength in Florida. So uh, really, really nice belt with uh, like these big Chicago screws so you don't have these little rivets in here that are gonna pop out. Uh, a rolled steel pin with no seam. That's a thing that matters. Uh, if you've ever used one with a seam that starts coming apart and it pinches the hell out of you, you'll know why, why that's important. Yeah. Um, all right, dude, so let's talk technology. All right. First question is, where is the network closet? We have no network closet. We have no <laughs> computers. We have no... DVR, cables. DVR backup. No, yeah, no video servers. Wi-Fi connected locks. No Wi-Fi locks, no security servers. I mean, if you have technology, you have to maintain it, and I'd rather not do that, and I'd rather not our gym owners, most importantly, do that. So we have as little technology as possible. Of the few pieces of technology that we do have, the idea is to find something that's consumer grade so that it's easy to replace, inexpensive, and doesn't require any expertise to operate or to service over time. And so for the speakers, it's a good example that we just use a Sonos $179 speaker, the Sonos One. And it's mounted up in the corner and it's the same color as the walls and so it kind of visually disappears. Yep. With light, if you look at, the, at us and you look at the equipment, you'll notice that there are either no shadows at all or very few shadows. Our goal was to have a very evenly, softly lit environment so that when you walk in, you can focus on lifting and there's no drama. The bigger a light is, the softer it is, the less shadows it produces. And so we have as many uh, lights that are as large as possible. And so these that's basically the biggest you can fit without doing any unusual modifications to the ceiling yeah. structure. And so we have two foot by four foot uh, lighting fixtures with a lot of LED diodes in each fixture across a large surface area, which produces that soft effect. If you lift in one of our gyms, you'll use the logbook app. That's how your data gets up on the TVs, and that's how you track your progress over time, and that's how your coaches can see how you're doing. The coaches actually have their own version of the logbook app where they can see your stuff and uh, edit it for you or just review it and check in on your progress. So um, how do I open this door from my phone when I'm at home, and how does this connect it? 
internet. That door lock can only be opened with human fingers that don't have phones or internet connections. Uh, internet connection is a vulnerability as far as you're, you're concerned. Yep, I don't want somebody from far away doing something to our, any of our gyms. Yep, so that's a starting strength gym. There is not much to it, but a lot of thought went into making it as simple and effective as possible, much like the starting strength program. It's still early days for us. We only have 16 gyms open at time of recording, but we're growing fast and this brand is going to be big. Watch out for it. Thanks.